Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... Ferret, the forensic expert from MI-12, was very thorough in his examination of Arthur Jarrett's apartment. He was intent on showing Mrs. Peel how professional he was. He and Peters, the cameraman, went about things systematically, hardly touching a thing. Mrs. Peel, on the other hand, sauntered casually about, picking things up and dropping them. Yes, there's no doubt about it. All the clues point to the fact that Arthur Jarrett left here on Sunday. Mrs. Peel, who'd been sitting on the window seat, suddenly got up and, on an impulse, lifted the lid of the seat. I'm afraid not, Mr. Ferret. Mm, I beg your pardon? Come over here. Look at this. It would seem he didn't leave here at all. Ferret did so and found himself gazing down into the sightless eyes of Arthur Jarrett. He'd been shot and couldn't have been more dead. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. So many housewives have discovered that the cleaning power of cold water Omo gives them sparkling clean results. Mrs. Joyce Whelan of East London has this to say. Now try it. And it works beautifully. I tried it on my children's clothes, on the general wash, and I noticed straight away that things were cleaner. Since mm -hmm. then, I, I will have used nothing else but cold water Omo. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. Keep your complexion soft and young looking with the creamy, moisturizing lather of Lux. Like Claudia Cardinale, choose Lux. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Two of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel ponder over the death of Arthur Jarrett and find there is even more murder planned in The Super Secret Cypher Snake, Mother had accepted the task of finding Arthur Jarrett, MI-12's missing security man, with some satisfaction. It was always pleasing to be asked to help a superior department, and Steed and Mrs. Peel had been quickly assigned to the case. But Steed's interview with George Webster at Cypher headquarters had been far from satisfactory. With an instinct cultivated over the years, Steed sensed that something in the headquarters was very wrong. All the staff denied ever seeing Jarrett. And yet, Steed had his doubts. He'd reported to Mother and continued to browse about the building, much to George Webster's annoyance. I, uh, I fail to see that we can help you further, Mr. Steed. You've interviewed all my staff. They've all corroborated what our security man, Murray, told you. People do not wander in and out of this building. Your Mr. Jarrett was never here. Mm, so everyone says. The, uh, weather. I beg your pardon? Murray said he didn't go out to lunch yesterday because the weather was against it. Now, what did he mean by that? Obviously that it rained heavily yesterday, and so he had his lunch in his office. Most of the staff did the same. Rain, did it? Well, maybe not in town, but it did here. <laughs> and now, Mr. Steed, I do appreciate your concern. I'd like to help you, but it's quite clear that none of us is able to, and so... Uh, <clears throat> but I am rather busy. Yes, yes, of course. Steed got up and reached for his hat and umbrella. As he did so, he noticed a cigarette lighter half hidden beneath some files. He glanced at Webster's desk. The large ashtray was empty and spotlessly clean. Steed took a cigarette case from an inner pocket. Uh, smoke. I don't thank you. Uh, look, Mr. Steed. Oh, it's all right. I'll not interrupt you further. Uh, sorry if I appear to be worrying things a little, but, you know, an establishment like this, uh, responsible for all top-secret codes, 
Well, where security is concerned, we do tend to worry, you know. You've seen our precautions. The whole perimeter of the building is wired. Every firing cabinet is connected to an alarm system. I have a master alarm on my desk. A touch of this button. Like this, Steve reached over and jabbed the button Webster had indicated. As the sirens wailed out, the doors burst open. Three security guards with revolvers burst into the room. What is that? What's wrong? What's it It's all right, it's all right, gentlemen. Just testing, nothing else. Just testing. It's very impressive, Mr. Webster. Under cover of this confusion, Steed slipped the cigarette lighter into his pocket. He placed his bowler on his head, swung his umbrella, said, Good day, gentlemen, and left. <laughs> In Jarrett's apartment, Mrs. Peel watched with interest as Peters, the photographer, took several shots of the dead man in the window seat. Uh, you don't suppose that we could move him, Mr. Ferret? Mm, certainly not. Oh, very well. But I have an idea that this is his bad side. Most people photograph better with the left profile. Uh, this isn't a screen test. Now, Mrs. Peel, if you'll be so good as to make a list of his personal possessions... Well, if you think it's necessary, very well. I do. In duplicate, please. You and my 12 boys are very thorough. All right. Ferret slipped on a pair of white gloves and extracted a comb from the dead man's pocket. Combs? One? Yeah, wrong. It's not a comb. It's a high-frequency resonator. A special issue. You see? It clicks open. The antenna springs out, so... How clever! Um, is that a type in he's wearing? A miniature microphone. Oh. Cufflinks? One pair? Wrong. A recorder and playback units. One set. Oh, Sorry. But you will agree that this is his wallet. Sorry. A survival kit. A K. A four-standard issue. And this can't be a cigarette case, can it? Uh, no. A point two two automatic pistol with twin magazines and self-loader. Uh, uh, you open it to fire. In my department, a gun is a gun is a gun. Uh, what's this? A gun? Mrs. Peel produced a small pocket revolver from the dead man's top pocket. Uh, no. Uh, that's a cigarette lighter. Uh, press the trigger and... You people really are intent on making life complicated, aren't you? I suppose this fountain pen is a hand-operated, gas-cooled, short-range grenade launcher. <laughs> Hard luck. No, that's his dispatch case. But of course. How could it be anything else? How's it work? Like this. Unscrew the nib. There. A sheet of paper inside. Oh, how very odd. It's just the page of a calendar. Monday, April the 1st. Yesterday. Let's see. Uh, what's so very special about yesterday? His death, perhaps? Hmm. But why the page of a calendar? A bit of photographic, Peters. Right. Yeah. Of course, the one thing that could help us is missing. It really is most annoying. And what is that? His cigarette lighter. I've been through all his pockets and it isn't there. But it should be there. No agent would go on a job without it. Well, not even if he didn't smoke? No, that's immaterial. He was issued with a cigarette lighter and that was a camera. Oh, I suppose I should have guessed. A single-lens, reflex, fully automatic, magazine-load cigarette lighter. Yeah, precisely. And it's missing. Well, I finished here, Mr. Ferret. What now? Well, as far as I'm concerned, lunch and back to Steve's apartment. Oh, I bet Mother's polished off all those cocktails. But I better go and report this to him. Would you care to come along, Peter? Ferret, you'll see to all this, won't you? Uh, leave it to me, Mrs. Beale. Leave it all to me. <laughs> I think you'll find the gin a little bruised, Mrs. Peel. Sorry. Oh, not at all, Mother. It's delicious. Well, up to your usual. Steed has inferior verbiage. I must speak to him about it. So, Jarrett is dead, and his camera cigarette lighter is missing. That's right. Mm. That wouldn't be what you were talking about, would it? John Steed entered the room, walked across to where Mother was sitting, and dropped a lighter into his lap. Oh, Steed. Splendid, yes. Yes, that's Jarrett's all right. From where? George Webster's office at Cypher HQ. I had a film in it, and I had it developed. These are the enlarged prints. Interested, Mrs. Peel? Fascinated, Steed. Hmm. Three shots. This way is the Cypher office. It's just a general view of the outer office. Girls working, nothing unusual. Then there's an exterior of one of the buildings, and the third is... Of George Webster sitting at his desk. Then you were right. He did get into the building. The camera cannot lie. Which is more than I can say for the director. Well, that's impossible. Webster can't lie. We went to school together. He swore on a stack of service manuals that he'd never set eyes on Arthur Jarrett. Oh, impossible. Webster has a triple star clearance. He can't lie. Well, I'm delighted to hear it, Mother. That's where I found the lighter. Someone else might have taken it there. Wait a minute. Where's the magnifying glass? 
Mrs. Peel picked up a magnifying glass and studied the shot of Webster's office. The calendar on Webster's desk, it's the same page as the one we found in Jarrett's dispatch case. Any pen? Oh, it's all very disturbing. Every code we use comes from Cypher HQ. If there's a leakage there, well... These paragraphs, there's no point to them. Why should Jarrett go to all the trouble of taking sneak pictures like these? Why, indeed. To prove that he was there, perhaps. But why bother? Unless he knew he wasn't going to get out. Hmm. I think we should hand these over to Peters. Get him to blow them up even bigger on his projector. There just might be a hidden clue somewhere. Very well. Take them down to the Ministry, Mrs. Peel. I'll remain here with Steve for a little while longer. We have work to do. I must teach Steve how to make a really good cocktail. <laughs> Mrs. Peel left at that point. She dropped the prints in at Peter's photographic laboratory at the Ministry and went home to change. As she drove away from the Ministry, a small van marked Classy Glass Cleaning, always top of the social ladder, drew up outside. Two men were in it. Their names, Vickers and Maskey. Uh, I think she's passing one of the lab boys. You're practically certain. Yeah, then we better get to work, haven't we? Right. The two men donned white coats, took ladders from the back of the van... And buckets. Uh, you uh, find this useful. Vickers took a gun from the van and dropped it into Maskin's bucket. Maskin acknowledged it with a nod and whistling tunelessly, propped his ladder against the outer wall of the building. Third from the top, then, is it? That's right. Okay. Here it goes. Maskin climbed the ladder, a window cleaner at work. No one in the whole of the street even noticed him. A short while after this, John Steed's telephone rang. Steed? Uh, Mr. Steed Peters here. These photographs that Mrs. Peel dropped in, I've got them on the projector at the moment, and uh, just a moment, there's someone at the... Hello? Hello, Peters. Peters, what is it? What the devil is it? Trouble, Steed. Sounds like it. It sounds like big trouble, Mother. In fact, it sounds like murder. And with a vicious uppercut, Jimmy Anderson finishes trimming his whole hedge in just three hours, 11 minutes. Great work, Jimmy. Do you play any other sport? Yes, dominoes. You're looking pretty cool, Jimmy. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. There's no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. If you use cold water Omo, it comes out very, very easily indeed. Says Mrs. Sutherland of the Inacoon. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. It cleans best. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel. Is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden. Mm -hmm.